Egli Therapeutics is developing extracellular vesicle therapy to treat severe dermatological conditions. Our therapy is first in class. We are developing, developing it to treat epidermolosis bullosa and burns. We are using we are isolating extracellular vesicles from mesenchymal stem cells. And just to give you a sense, EB is a rare pediatric skin blistering disease. It's a, it's a very tragic disease in children. We are harnessing the power of MSCs without using the cells. I've heard the term today, cell-free therapy, which is applicable. As we know, EVs operate as the paracrine wound healing mediators of stem cells. We're isolating EVs secreted by allogeneic bone marrow-derived MSCs as therapy. We have, we have developed a proprietary isolation method which produces therapeutic grade product. Some of the advantages of extracellular vesicles include um, that EVs do, it has been shown in multiple publications that they play a critical role in cutaneous repair. They're stable, they're not living, they don't require oxygen. They deliver and stimulate production of missing proteins in diseased cells, and I'll get into that a little bit later. And they're lower cost. You get higher production yields and lower handling costs with extracellular vesicles. We have been cleared by the FDA to begin a phase 1, 2A study in burn patients, and we're filing a second IND for EB in the fourth quarter of 2018. We're addressing markets um, in uh, rare disease uh, areas as well as significant markets in size like the burn market. Our founder is Dr. Evangelos Badiavos. Uh, he's a dermatologist. He has been a pioneer in MSC therapy, treating uh, over 20 patients under two INDs. Um, he has demonstrated, in spite of the success that he has had in his MSC trials, um, he has demonstrated, and others have as well, that extracellular vesicles are really operating as the paracrine wound healing mediators of these MSCs. So he founded Agli to develop MSC-derived EVs as therapy. In addition to myself and Dr. Barievos, Ian McNeese is our head of manufacturing. He's got extensive cell production knowledge, and Robert Ryan comes to our board with 25 years of regulatory experience, was the former CEO of Cyoderm, which uh, developed EB into phase two. He also sits on the board of DEBRA, so a, a, a team with a lot of operating and uh, scientific expertise. So our pipeline, we are moving into the clinic with a burn indication. We've been cleared by the FDA, as I mentioned, and we plan to file our second in this quarter for epidermolosis bullosa, and we'll be focusing specifically on dystropic EB. So what exactly are extracellular vesicles? I'm sure many of you have heard of them, but just so we're all on the same page, EVs are secreted by all cells, including MSCs. They contain cell-specific payloads of proteins, lipids, genetic material, and they transport this cargo and fuse into target cells, altering those cells, altering the physiology and function of those cells. They don't migrate, uh, they don't proliferate, they don't engraft, and you can source them from adipose tissue, bone marrow, and other sources. If I leave you with anything, the most important aspect of EVs is they carry the signals of the cells and the cell at the time they're secreted, but they are not cells. Like stem cells, bone marrow MSC EVs stimulate fibroless proliferation, they stimulate fibroless migration, and angiogenesis in vitro. And this uh, paper was published in um, Stem Cell Development and it really shows uh, the effect of uh, EVs on fibroblasts, very similar to what you would see if you put MSCs um, in with fibroblasts as well. So with this success in vitro, we moved into the clinic, and we, uh, we, took, our isolate, we took EVs and isolated, we isolated them from MSCs and put them into animal models. These were full thickness wound and burn models into animals, and we saw Surprisingly, um, adverse inflammation in those animals. And when we went back and looked, what had happened is the process by which we had isolated those EVs had damaged or modified those EVs. Things had attached to them, they had been crushed, uh, they had been changed or altered in some way. And that caused the animal to have an adverse reaction. So we went back to the drawing board, developed a process, a gentler process, a process that while we were processing the EVs, the way they went in came out, the way 
it was the way they came out. And we were able to reduplicate our um, studies in the animals and show that these EVs, when, modified, when isolated by our isolation method, produce the same uh, efficacy and healing that you would have seen with uh, mesenchymal stem cells. So very successful. I'm um, sorry for the picture. Uh, it really speaks a lot to see. This is a uh, animal that has been inflicted with second degree wounds. This is a pig animal, uh, a pig. On the left, we isolated EVs using gold standard methods. Um, and you can see within five days, uh, significant inflammation that mitigated any healing. On the right, we used our method of isolation and the animal within five days not only had healed uh, very rapidly, but you can see hair growing uh, within the wound site. Um, and with, uh, with cross sections, you can see that this in fact um, is regenerative healing. So our process, our proprietary process has allowed us to advance into the clinic. Um, traditional isolation processes are very effective in research and diagnostics. But because they can modify the EVs, they will not work, um, and they haven't worked for us in animal models. But this is a process that's re reproducible. We can use it to isolate EVs from any cell line. It doesn't require specialized equipment. And uh, we've filed several patents on, on both the use and the uh, um, isolation process itself. So we're going after two different markets. The first is epidermolosis bullosa. As I mentioned, it's a rare pediatric disease affecting about 25 to 50,000 patients in the United States. There's no treatment, there's no cure. It's painful, debilitating. The, uh, the upper level of the skin does not attach to the lower level of skin due to a genetic deficiency. And um, these patients blister quite frequently and quite horrifically. Uh, to give you a sense of how much money spent by the families to on these patients' bandages can run approximately $14,000 a month. We, I was speaking to the head of Deborah, which is a patient advocacy group, and he spends $80,000 a month uh, on a month on his nine-year-old. So it is a disease that is there's no they don't even go to the doctor because there is nothing the doctors can do for them. In terms of burns, we came up through the burn area because we've been funded uh, extensively by the Department of Defense and obviously burns is a major um, uh, focus of, um, of the Department of Defense. But this is a market that in the United States we see 50,000 patients that um, are affected with burn injuries that have to be hospitalized and we as a nation spend about $10 billion treating these patients. And in spite of the fact that most of them uh, survive, they survive with debilitating scarring and disfigurement, with immobility. Um, it takes them a long time to heal. And chronic pain, itching, and psychological issues are, are factors that have to be considered with this patient population. So let's talk about EB. Uh, and again, I'm sorry for the picture in the derm space. Uh, it's the, uh, the picture is, really tells the story. So again, there's no cure for this disease. There are three types of EB, uh, simplex, junctional, and dystropic, and they're each caused by uh, a gene deficiency or um, a gene error. And in the case of dystropic EB, which is the third one down, this is a monogenetic disorder where the patient cannot produce collagen 7. And why do we care about collagen 7? Collagen 7 is used by the body to make anchoring fibrils, and the anchoring fibrils attach the upper level of, of tissue to the lower level of tissue. And without anchoring fibrils, the tissue detaches very easily with uh, simple friction. And in the case, you'll see the middle, the arrow to the right, recessive dystropic EB, the patients cannot produce um, uh, collagen 7 at all. Um, there are other forms where there's a modest amount of collagen 7, but recessive, recessive dystropic is the worst of the, um, of the group. So this, uh, this is from data published um, in Biochemy the, earlier this year in April. Um, we have shown that extracellular vesicles that we've isolated carry not only collagen 7, but they carry the col 7 a one mRNA. And these EVs um, fuse into diseased recessive dystrophic EV, EB fibroblasts and cause those fibroblasts to make new collagen. And, uh, 
on this page, I, I wanted to show you on day zero, we take the fibroblasts and we treat them with extracellular vesicles, and then we wash them to remove any free-floating EVs. By day six, we collect the media and we evaluate it, and you'll see at the bottom it's very dose-dependent, but these disease cells, which could never make collagen-7 before, are now making substantial amounts of collagen-7 that can be easily uh, detected. So we think there is significant opportunity to combine the wound healing aspects of the extracellular vesicles with this ability to deliver um, the protein and the defective um, mRNA. Um, so in addition to uh, um, our ability, our, the EV's ability to transport and deliver and produce uh, collagen-7 from these cells, we saw an increased fibroblast production. We saw increased fibroblast resistance to trips and digestion. And again, as we combine that with the regenerative healing that we saw in the animals and the lack of inflammation um, due to a, a, a specialized process, we think there's a lot of application here, not only for dystrophic EB, but potentially other forms of EB. The burn indication, we talked about how big this market is. Um, an average patient in the, who gets hospitalized for burns costs about $240,000 to um, care for if you get an, a complication like an infection the cost goes up to $1.5 million. Um, obviously the DOD has funded this because 15 to 20% of all war injuries occur because uh, are, are due to burn injuries. And it's the fourth most common trauma globally. This, let me step back and again reiterate that we come out of the stem cell space, and this is a trial that was done at the University of Miami by Dr. Badievos using uh, mesenchymal stem cells to treat uh, burn patients. And this was a patient whose arm uh, was severely burned by oil in a restaurant. And uh, day one, you can see on the left under A, 10 days after the first MSC treatment, in B, you can see the patient has completely epithelialized by day uh, 17 after the second treatment. Uh, this patient not uh, saw complete healing with no scarring, repigmentation, which you've never see in this type of burn, skin elasticity, and hair follicle regeneration, another characteristic you generally do not see with these types of patients. So this was very encouraging to us. And when we were moving into the extracellular vesicle therapy world and talking to the FDA about our, our therapy, we demonstrated to them that when you harvest the EVs, excuse me, when you harvest the MSCs from the patient, from, excuse me, from the lab for the patient, they don't contain, the saline does not contain any EVs. But by the time you administer those MSCs to the patient, there are upwards of a trillion extracellular vesicles in that, um, in that vial. So when we're administering, uh, when, when the University of Miami was administering MSCs to its patients to treat these burns, they were actually administrating a significant amount of extracellular vesicles. And that, of course, was part of our safety backup with the FDA to show that these things have caused no significant adverse re reaction in, in humans. Going back to the animal studies we used, we did for extracellular vesicles um, using, em using mesenchymal stem cells as well as EVs using traditional methods of isolation and, ex and our extracellular vesicles, you can see that our EVs produce the same amount of healing uh, and sometimes even better than the MSCs themselves. Here's some histology. You can see the formulation of vascular growth as well as neuronal growth. So where we are today, we are, in, we are entering phase 1-2A with our burn indication, and we hope to be in the clinic next year with our, um, our EB indication, and we're looking to raise $10 million as part of a Series A. Thank you very much.